After you watch this video, you'll know how to get started in Valheim, how to kill the first boss, and you'll be on your way to the Bronze Age. I'll be showing you how to get all of this done in 15 easy steps, and it'll take you about 1-2 to two hours depending on your luck, so that you can get past the first stage of the game nice and easily and move on to the more interesting stuff in Valheim, especially if you're coming back and you're trying to get to the Mistlands as soon as possible. Let's get into my 15 steps to starting your Valheim world. Step 1. Spawn in. Congrats, you did it. Starting is the hardest part of anything. Step 2. You want to gather up 6 stone and 14 wood to craft the basic items. You can get stone by pressing E on these loose rocks, and you can get wood by pressing E on these loose branches. To craft them, you're going to need to press tab and select the axe and then press craft. Once that's done, you'll do the same with the club and the hammer. If you want to rearrange the order they are in your hotbar, you just click and drag them. Step 3. Find some food. Around the starting spawn area, you should find some raspberries, which look like this, and some mushrooms, which look like this. Press E on them to collect them too. You can eat them by pressing right click on them on your inventory, and if you hover over them, you can see precisely what stat boost the item gives. As a little tip for the rest of the game, if a food item has a red fork next to it, it means that it gives you more health than stamina. If a food item has a yellow fork next to it, it means that it gives you more stamina than health, and if an item has a grey fork, it will give you equal stamina and health. In Valheim, you can only eat three unique food items at a time, which means that finding the best combinations to go together to give you as much health and stamina as you can have at any one moment is a very important part of the game. You don't actually need to eat to survive, you will never starve to death in Valheim, but you will need to eat if you want to increase your health and stamina. Now, right now, all you need to worry about is just eat your mushrooms and berries to give you a nice stamina boost to make the next steps a little bit more bearable. Step 4. Press E on the runestone at spawn. This will show you where the first boss is. The first boss is called Aiktir. You can open the map with the M key. Now then, for step 5, you're going to want to take your stone axe and gather up a stack of 50 wood. You can either cut down trees, which is dangerous because they'll one-shot you if they fall on you at this stage, or you can save yourself some time and danger by just chopping down the small trees. You can probably one or two shot them at this stage, and you'll get about two wood from each of them. It won't take long, just gather up these basic building materials for step 6, which is building your workbench. You want to select your hammer on your hotbar, right click and select the workbench. A workbench will cost you 10 wood. Now you can't build right next to spawn, so you'll want to move a little bit away from it until the radius of the workbench turns white. You'll need the workbench if you want to build, repair or destroy any blocks by the way, except for the campfire which can be built anywhere. You can use the mouse wheel to rotate it if you need it to be in a different angle from what it starts in, and then use left click place it. You can't quite use it yet though. Workstations in Valheim need a roof to work, and this one also needs 70% cover from the environment, which is actually fairly easy to do with a workbench. You want to open up the build menu again, grab the wooden walls, and place one on each side and two at the back. Select the 45 degree wall, place one on each side, take the 45 degree thatch roof, and place two between the walls. There, you should be able to use your workbench now. If you can't, just add in some more of those walls and maybe some more roof pieces. Usually, this is enough to use your workbench. Now, at the workbench, you can craft new items as well as repair your current tools, weapons and armour by pressing this button repeatedly. You want a workbench so that you can make a bow and arrows, which we're going to use to hunt deer and kill the boss. While you're here, build yourself a chest to store some of your loose items like stone, wood or dandelions. Step 7. Mass Murder You'll need 8 leather scraps to make a bow. One boar will drop one leather scrap, so go out and kill 8 boar. Your wooden club will handle this perfectly well. What you want to do is just run around the meadows biome and keep an eye out for them. They're the little black blobs, they should be pretty easy to see. Just keep an ear out for any piggy logical noises. If you run into a boar runestone, you're quite lucky there. It'll have several boars that are just free for the taking, and just kill those boars that spawn there. The boars that spawn there will not respawn, by the way. If you happen to find any 1 star or 2 star boars, I'd recommend actually trying to leave them alive and marking where you found them on the map. 
by selecting a marker and clicking it where you want it to go. These are very good later on if you want to farm the boars, because higher level boars give more leather and more meat, and they'll pass on their stars to their offspring. And yes, you can aim and farm boars in this game, but I'm not going to get into that in this video. Now, while you're out killing piggies, keep an eye out for necks. Necks give you neck tails, which you can cook, which will give you a decent little health boost. Also, you'll want to gather more mushrooms and berries while you're searching for these boars. If you come across a water source, you can gather flint. Flint spawns on the edges of rivers and shorelines and is used to unlock some more recipes. They aren't needed for this guide, so you can ignore it for now if you'd like. Or if you want to extend this out a little bit and make yourself some flint tools, you can do that, but it's not needed right now. Make sure you stay in the meadows biome. If you see the pop-up of another biome, get out of there. You are not ready for there yet, it doesn't matter what biome it is, get out of it, stay in the meadows. Step 8 is to cook some of your food. Once you have your 8 leather scraps, you want to head back to your workbench. It's probably nighttime by now, so build yourself a campfire. And since you have a campfire anyway, you want to build a couple of cooking stations above your campfire. Press E on the station and that will take the meat out of your inventory and start cooking it. Listen for that first sizzle and watch for any colour changes. That means it is done. You can press E to take that piece of meat back off the cooking station. If you hear a second sizzle, that means you've burned the food, which means you've now got some coal. Slightly annoying, but it is useful later on. You'll want to cook up your boar meat and your neck meat and store the boar meat away for your boss fight. You don't need the health boost of the boar meat right now because the meadows are extremely safe before you kill the first boss because the only enemy that spawns is graylings. So for now, you can comfortably live with mushrooms, berries and neck meat. Now then, while your meat cooks, you're going to want to gather up a stack of wood for step 9. Step 9 is get ready to hunt. You're going to want to go to your workbench and craft a crude bow and then craft yourself 100 arrows. They're crafted in batches of 20, so you'll want to craft 5. Conveniently, 50 wood will get you a bow and 100 arrows. How neat. Using your bow is fairly simple. You want to hold the primary attack button until the white circle reaches its tightest point, or as tight as you need it to be to hit your specific target and then let go. Aim above your target if they're far away, it's a bow, you probably know how it works. It costs stamina to draw it, so try not to hold on to it for too long. Step 10, the hunt begins. You need to go out and kill a bunch of deer. Each deer you kill will give you some meat and deer hide, and it has a 50% chance to drop you a deer trophy. The deer trophies are what we need right now. We need two of them to summon the first boss. So go out into the meadows and kill as many deer with your bow as it takes. You'll need to kill at least two deer, but it could take a lot more because the trophy is chance based. Deer are quite skittish, so try to kill them from far away with your bow before they see you. You can find deer very easily by listening out for their calls. Make sure to grab deer meat and hide too because it is extremely useful. Step 11, final supply checks. You're going to want to take your deer meat back to the campfire and cook some of it. It is a very good early game health item to combine with your boar meat to get a very good health boost for the first boss. If you're low on arrows, let's say less than 50, craft some more. You should only need 20 or 30 arrows to kill the boss, but just to be safe, bring it at least half a stack. Keep in mind that the game does get more difficult if there's more players, and that includes bosses, so you're going to need more arrows total to kill it with more players. But wooden arrows are extremely cheap and it is not hard to get a lot of them. Grab your arrows, your boar meat, your deer meat, and some raspberries or honey if you happen to have found any, and make sure your weapons and armour are all repaired and head over to that marker that you got from the runestone earlier. Step 12, prepare for the boss fight. Near the altar, you're gonna wanna build yourself a campfire and press X to sit down at it. You wanna wait for about 20 seconds and you'll get a rested bonus. So massively boost your health and stamina regen as well as give you a skill XP gain. If it's nighttime or raining, you're gonna wanna wait until morning because being wet gives you a stamina and health penalty and being cold gives you an even bigger health and stamina penalty. So you'll wanna put all the odds in your favor by waiting until morning morning and for the storm to pass before you fight the boss, especially since Aiktir is a lightning based enemy and being wet actually makes you weaker to lightning. You may also need to wait for your food bar to let you eat again if you've eaten the wrong things recently. When items start flashing that means you can replace them and you're going to want to replace them with a raspberry or if you found some honey use that for a stamina boost and then eat boar meat and deer meat to maximize your health. When it's a clear sunny day you've eaten your feast and you've had some rest. It's time to take your two deer trophies over to the altar, build them into your hotbar and press that key while looking at the altar to summon the boss.
Step 13, kill Aegtyr. Aegtyr is a very easy boss compared to the rest. He has three attacks, a headbutt that he does when he's close to you, a lightning bolt that he does when he's far away, and an area of effect stomp. Avoiding the headbutt is relatively easy, just stay away from him. He spends a lot of time running around the area, kind of just trying to turn to get to you. So keeping away from him is quite easy. If you see him running straight for you, then it's a good idea to use the arena or trees so that he can't connect the attack. At this point he may also try to use the stomp, which might damage you through structures, so you may want to sprint away from him when you see that big signal. The last attack is the hardest to dodge and probably the most dangerous. The lightning bolt. If you see him do an attack signal while he's far away, he's trying to shoot you. It's a good idea to just run wide away from him because the lightning will come from the direction of his antlers. You can press block and space at the same time to perform a dodge, which will make you briefly immune if you time it right, but getting that right as a new player can be very, very difficult. So if you're a new player, just sprint out the way, it's a lot easier. For your offense, you're mostly going to keep running away from him. When you get a good bit away from him, fire a fully loaded shot into him and just make sure you try and keep your stamina above 50% so that if he does do a random wild sprint to go for a melee attack, you can sprint out of the way. There's no prizes for killing him faster, so play it smart and conserve your stamina in the fight. After like 20 successful shots, he will go down if you're on single player. If you're in multiplayer, it'll take more shots, but it should be just as easy. Step 14, collect your reward. A tier will give you three hard antlers and one trophy. These are both very helpful, so don't forget about them. And then step 15 is acquire the real reward. If you take the head back to the starting area and hang it from the deer stone, you can select the power. Every boss in the game will give you a power after killing them, and egg tears will let you jump and run for 60% less stamina. Now, the ability is activated once you have it selected by pressing F. It'll give you the buff for 5 minutes, and you won't be able to use it again for another 20 minutes, so use it wisely. The powers are actually applied to all nearby players, but they they don't stack, so if you have four players, you can keep a power going constantly by having one player give the power, and then when it runs out, you have another player activate it, and so on, in a loop. The other reward you get from this is the ability to craft an antler pickaxe. The antler pickaxe will let you remodel terrain and break stones, but more importantly, it'll let you gather copper and tin from the black forest biome, which is where you're going next, and where the next boss is. Now before you go mining anything, you're going to want to make sure you go into some burial crypts and gather certling cores, which are used to craft kilns and smelters. You're going to need one of each of those if you want to actually turn that ore into metal that you can use to craft. Also at this stage, it's probably time to build an actual house somewhere relatively near the Black Forest, but not inside it. Preferably along the shoreline because sailing does become important later on. But that's as far as I want to take this guide, I don't want it to be an hour long. You should have a bow, a dead boss, a superpower, and a pickaxe. You're ready to start really playing Valheim now. Because guess what? That last couple of hours for you, that was just a tutorial. Things start getting serious now. If you want some more Valheim content to enjoy, why not check out my 7 things I wish I knew when starting out in Valheim video. Thank you to my channel members and patrons for making this video possible, and thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.